Well, I am here in what is now known as Wilkesboro, North Carolina. At the time, this area behind me, which is the old courthouse here for Wilkes County, this area was once known as Mulberry Fields Meeting House. It was the early form of the courthouse, and it was here in the end stages of the Revolutionary War in North Carolina that an interesting, uh, tragic incident happened in my family history. Because uh, what many people don't know about the Revolutionary War is that there were equal numbers of Americans who fought on the side of the crown as well as those who fought for the side of independence. And so there were probably a third of the people here in North Carolina who supported staying loyal to the crown and they were known as Tories after the Tory party which had control of parliament in England. And the Patriots or Whigs as they were known were the people who were fighting for independence. And both sides formed militia and those militia often clashed here in places like Wilkes County, North Carolina. The commander of the Patriot Militia here in Wilkes County was a man by the name of Colonel Benjamin Cleveland, and Cleveland was a ruthless fighter. He is known here in North Carolina as a hero of the American Revolution. In fact, there's a county, Cleveland County, that's named after him. But if you were to ask me what I think of the man, I would have a very different opinion, and it's because of what happened concerning my sixth great-grandfather. On multiple occasions, Colonel Cleveland found himself in possession of captured Tory militia, some of whom had probably been his neighbors, and he may have been familiar with some of them. And when he would capture them, he would bring them here to the Mulberry Fields Meeting House, which was the seat of government, and put them on trial. And on several occasions, those men were found guilty and were brought here to a tree behind the meeting house and hanged for their crime of remaining loyal to the crown. My sixth grade grandfather was a Tory captain by the name of William Thomas Riddle. He was about 40 years old, a native of Virginia, had been born and lived his entire life here in the colonies and had settled here in what is known as the Yadkin River Valley and became a captain of militia. And he, along with some of his men, snuck one night into Colonel Cleveland's camp and defeated Cleveland's men, captured Colonel Cleveland himself and made off with him. Now, I don't doubt that Captain Riddle had every intention of putting Cleveland himself on trial and probably would have found him guilty and probably would have taken him to a tree somewhere here in the valley and hanged him for his crimes against the Loyalist militia. But it wasn't to be because one of the captains who served under Colonel Cleveland, who happens to be an ancestor of mine on my father's side of the family, a man by the name of Captain Benjamin Greer, Along with Colonel Cleveland's brother, they mounted a raid. They rescued Colonel Cleveland, captured, captured Captain Riddle and a few of his men. Captain Riddle and his two men, uh, by one source, were known as Reeves and Goss. By another source, were actually Riddle's father-in-law and his son, Moses, who was just a teenager. Those three men were taken here to Mulberry Fields Meeting House. Colonel Cleveland put them on trial, quickly found them guilty, and sentenced them to be executed. Once the men were sentenced to be hanged, they knew that their time was short, and they had some time to prepare themselves for their fate. Captain Riddle's wife, my sixth great grandmother, her name was Harriet, um, more popularly known as Happy Riddle, was present with her husband, had been traveling with him, with his men, and was here to say her final goodbyes to her husband before his execution. By some accounts, the two men that were hanged with him were Harriet's father and their son, Moses, who was just a teenager. If that's the case, my sixth grade grandmother was present for the execution simultaneously of her father, her husband, and her teenage son. I tend to doubt those accounts, and I believe it's probably more accurate that the men hanged with Captain Riddle were two of his associates by the names of Reeves and Goss. In any case, they were brought here to the place known as Tory Oak. Probably prayers were said. Benjamin Cleveland, who was known to have been over 300 pounds, is said to have eaten a very large meal and made the men wait while he ate his meal before carrying out the sentence. But they were hanged right here on this very spot. This tree behind me is not the tree, obviously. The tree that stood here, known as Tory Oak, was 300 years old. 
It was destroyed in a storm a few decades ago and in its place was planted this tree to represent the one that had been destroyed. Captain Riddle's probably buried somewhere here, perhaps under the pavement that I'm standing on right now. But that is not where the story ends for my family. After the execution of her husband, Happy Riddle eventually remarried a man by the name of William Ingraham. They settled in Eastern Tennessee and Captain Riddle and his wife, their great-great-grandson was born in Eastern Kentucky. His name was George Washington Mowry, and I am his great-great-grandson. So that is my legacy. This is a part of my family story. It's a part of the story of many Americans, and it's not a real proud chapter in our history, but it is the reality of what happened during our fight for independence. Many well-meaning Americans fought on both sides, some loyal to the crown, some fighting for independence, but both doing so with honor and with all of the belief that they had in their cause.